Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. You want to go to this silly thing? Welcome to the October 22nd, 2012 Selections no. Meeting. Please join me for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we had an RSA 91-A colon 3, Roman numeral 2, small a, NB, uh, non-public meeting. This is the 7 o'clock public meeting. And we're going to have <coughs> the first uh, public hearing, RSA 31 colon 95, hyphen B first, the hearing is for the New Hampshire Safety Grant Hampton Operational Safe Commute Patrols Program. If I could, sir? Yes. Um, I've talked to the police chief. Uh, these monies are coming out of the Highway Safety Funds. These are federal monies coming through. They're monies to operate uh, special patrols. They'll be looking for um, cell phone usage, uh, speeding within uh, high traffic areas, passing buses with flashing lights. This is the type of thing they're talking about in regards to the commute patrol program. When I read the, read the, the contractual agreement, it's talking about three-hour patrols, one officer, two patrols per day for 12 days. Uh, that totals $4,680 plus uh, payroll uh, cost of $1,170 for a total of $5,850, which I believe is the total amount of the grant being requested. Okay, anyone from the public want to speak on this? Here at the table. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mike, for trying to explain this. I appreciate that. So basically what we have to do is keep track of the hours that our particular patrolmen participate in this activity to, pro to be correct. qualified for the grant, so to speak. That's correct. They're actually, these are extra patrols, mm -hmm. so they'd be assigned that way, and they are tracked um, by the grant account number. So that's, that's already, been, whenever we have a grant, we keep track of the hours specifically sure. for that. Now, the question, uh, the, the, the question might follow on if I was uh, coming in as a taxpayer. Is that going to be an additional of what they normally do? Is that going to involve any overtime? Yes, sir. And that's, that's why it's a grant amount. Uh, <coughs> that these, these times will be additional, and they're going out on specific reasons uh, during the commuting. Okay. Thank you. That is my question. Mr. Moore. No questions. Thank you. Mr. Bean. None, sir. Mr. Nichols, no. Any other comments? No, sir. No. So do we um, need to have a motion here? Yes, sir. I'll make the motion for you, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I'll second. Well, the motion is to accept mm -hmm. the, grant. the grant. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. We move on to public comments. Any public comment? Mrs. Wolfley. Gentlemen, a very brief follow-up on my comments. To you last Monday referenced the beach waste. Um, Mr. Pierce was kind enough to mention that the uh, agreement between the town and the state going back into the 30s is now online, which is great. I hadn't realized that. Um, so I have looked it up, and I'm not sure how many of you have, have uh, taken the time to review it, but Chapter 242, which was negotiated as of May 6, 1931, mainly referenced the breakwater on Ocean Boulevard uh, from the Coast Guard Station to Haverhill Avenue to protect the Route 1 and the uh, Route 1A and the beaches. Uh, but in June 14, 1933, Chapter 159, the agreement with the state and the town repealed 242 concurrent with its passage. And it says that the purpose of that was to acquire the Hampton Harbor Toll Bridge, which of course the state gets the tolls from, and provides emergency construction for coastal and highway protection. Uh, Roman 2 references jetties and seawalls. Roman 4, number 3, talks about acquisition of land. And it talks about preserving and maintaining Hampton Beach for the use and enjoyment of the public. The condition is that the town of Hampton release and convey to the state all right, title, and interest 
in and to the land in set, and said highway to be held by the state for highway, par highway parks and recreation purposes forever. And then it says Hampton may maintain comfort stations, bandstand, chamber of commerce building, parking places, and playground, and provided for these, um, provided that these, the town of Hampton shall, shall maintain public order and sanitation. And I was talking to one of you gentlemen last week and read that and mentioned public order, which I would assume is the police department, and sanitation. And I said, what's your interpretation of sanitation? And I was told, sewers, waste, wastewater, um, you know, toilets, sinks, showers. So I see nothing there, and you're welcome to read the whole thing. It goes on with other concerns. But that's the only section where it says, that Hampton shall maintain public order and sanitation. So I don't know whether you need a legal interpretation of sanitation or what people meant by that in the 30s, but I see nothing there that says that Hampton has to bring, has to take in the state's waste. And looking at your joint operation plan that expires December 31st, are you in the process of negotiating a renewal of this that's only two months away because you have no mention in this at all while well, you're talking about waste and recycling but there's no mention of the state being required <coughs> to separate the recycling from the waste and when I put out my waste carts on Wednesday this week I'm required I think by what you're telling me Thank you. to have recycling in one and waste in the other Thank you very so much. So this is an issue that I hope you're going to continue to work on. We are. Okay. Thank you. Rick, I'd like to make one comment. Mary Louise, I think, I've read that, not recently, that chapter 159 or whatever, mm -hmm. but I think that the Hampton Harbor toll bridge that was referenced in that is not the current toll situation at 95 where they keep, where they collect revenues today. I believe at one time what's now called the Neil Underwood Bridge mm -hmm. was a toll bridge. So yes. that's actually what it That's the bridge between not, Hampton and not, going over to Seabrook. Not the where Ham, not where the state collects the tolls today. Yeah. No, it but it was, was the, it was the a intent dime was for the, years. Mm. Yeah. The intent was they call that the Hampton toll yep. bridge, but yep. whatever. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Any other public comment? Tonight we have Michael Pierce on the left hand side here. Ben Moore, Bill Bean, Richard Nichols. Michael Swotzer, myself, Rick Griffin. Announcements in community calendar, Mr. Bean. None, sir. Nope, nothing. Actually, I do have a message from the police chief. Uh, people will be seeing a Hampton uh, police car in black and white. Uh, I saw that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they've uh, had the latest vehicle added to the, to the fleet in that color uh, sequence which is at the suggestion of the commission after 9-11, so that black and white basically becomes a universal color and for recognition purposes in regards to police. Um, the police chief is asking the people to review it, and if they think it's great, uh, he is planning on hopefully phasing in that type of color scheme over the next few years during the replacement cycle. Mr. Pierce. Uh, yes, uh, in relation to the announcement community calendar, I would like to thank um, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the library, and the town of Hampton, and various other people who've contributed a lot towards this effort of getting these 12 PCs ready to go, and we're ready to take six of those down for the first round this week. So I want to thank everybody who really contributed a lot to that. We got a lot of good PCs that were salvageable. I mean, had seen better days, but we were able to clean them up. and. Uh, they run reasonably well, and I think it'll serve a real good purpose. So I want to thank everybody who contributed for the mice and the black screens, the PCs, and the whole bit. Even some of the, the members of our board have contributed to that issue. So I want to thank everybody, and I really mean that. Thank you. Mr. Moore. I believe this Saturday, the 27th, is Spirit Night. And there's activities at Tuck Field at 4 o'clock. I believe that's a parade of kids in costume. And then there's... Uh, uh, a spirit night activity at Morelli Square that starts at 6. More information is best obtained from the Parks and Rec Department. 
And I'm, I don't really have the right time. Um, <coughs> I tried to find it out today before I ca came here. Um, but it, the Chamber of Commerce will know, and people or people could call the Beck Rouge. But um, uh, Al Fleury and McKinnon's Market have purchased 200 pumpkins um, and donated them to the center school, and they're going to carve them, and they're going to be displayed <laughs> all outside, I, I guess on the deck or something, but they're all going to be lit up. and. It's hopefully the beginning of something really big, one more thing that can go on, you know, in the off season. So there's been a, it's just, it, they've been talking about it, but they're, I guess they had to work it out at the school and everything. So they'll either know at the center school <coughs> or at the chamber or at the, the Beck Rouge. First, would you like a drink of water? No, thank you. Thank you. First, on for appointments is uh, Chief Silver, Fire Department update. Welcome. <coughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. My keys are left over. I did leave a few documents on the table for you this evening, and they're more just for your reference. A couple of those I'll go through and explain as I go through my report. Uh, beginning with activity, um, I was here last in July, so it's only been approximately two complete months since my last visit. Um, we've had five significant fires in the last week. Uh, one was at 82 Tide Mill Road at the business known as Brazonix. Uh, we had one at 389 Ocean Boulevard. It was a private residence and a kitchen. One at 80 North Shore Road, which was a barn. Unfortunately, it was a historic barn that was totally lost. Uh, one at 571 Winnicunit Road, the Sandpiper Bay condominiums. And the most recent one about a week ago at 816 Lafayette Road, O'Leary's Grill. So far year to date, we've had a total of 19 residential fires, 29 total fires within structures, and an additional 23 fires within vehicles or areas adjacent to buildings. Uh, part of the document that you have are a, a year-to-date statistical report. There's one for EMS, there's one for fire. They are all stapled together, and uh, just to save some paper, they're done as two-sided copies, but they're there for your reference. The breakdown by district, approximately 50% of our calls year-to-date, totally 744, have occurred in the Beach District. These relate just to the fire incident responses, 42% or a total of 626 in District 2. That does not include those areas west of 95 or south of the interchange. Those are considered part of the rural district. Uh, in that district, 117 incident responses, total of 7.9%. Our total fire responses are down from 1664 in 2011 to 1,487 in 2012. Those are exclusive of EMS responses. It represents about a 10.6% decrease. Um, nothing in particular points out any trend. Each of the months have been consecutively lower over the last um, nine month period. The way we usually see our statistics trend as far as our response, it goes in somewhat of a sawtooth pattern. It's about a three year escalating trend and then in the fourth year it drops down a little bit and then it begins to escalate over about a three year period and then it drops down. If I look back over 20 years, it just hysterically trends in that type of a pattern. Total dollar loss from all fires in 2011 was 76,000 while this year, I'm sorry, that's 2012. Correction, that was the 2011. This year to date, Total fire loss is approximately 161,000, a little over twice that in 2011. However, the last couple of fires that um, I mentioned haven't been included in the statistic because the investigation and reports haven't been finalized. False alarms in 2012 are right on track with 2011 at 165. Um, the fire district breakdown, it's almost an even split and decrease, about a 10.5% decrease in the beach district, about a 13% decrease in the town district. And because the rural district is a significantly small area, it has fewer responses, it was only about a 2.5% change. Mutual aid received has increased slightly from 2011. 
mutual aid given has decreased by approximately 20%. Year to September end, we responded to 1,706 medical emergencies. Uh, pretty considerable decrease over 2011 for the same time period of about 130 less. Year to date, we've had 229 occasions of simultaneous EMS calls with some as many as five, six, or seven patients at once. I did give you a small one-page graph that kind of illustrates the number of those calls occurring the highest incidents are two EMS calls occurring at the same time, not necessarily two patients, two separate incidents at different locations. The purchase of a replacement ambulance has been delayed as we're <coughs> unable to negotiate a final contract with the proposed bidder. Too many changes were being requested by the dealer, resulting in an increased cost to the town. I wasn't comfortable with an increase over what I had come in and presented to you. And because so much time has passed, we're going to rebid it. So I'll be um, running that process again pretty soon. September was inspection month. All of our vehicles have passed. The budget for our vehicle maintenance is running right on track. It should continue to do so, provided there are no major failures in the uh, next 10 weeks of the year. I did provide to you a one page. It's, it's only a piece of the overall timeline but it gives you kind of a snapshot view of where we hope to go here over the next few weeks in getting our fire station construction project underway. We've been working through some fine details between legal and insurance on getting our construction manager contract signed. signed. I'm told today that that is near finalized, a couple of final words to be adjusted in the contract. Both parties agree and we should have that signed shortly. Um, all of the construction documents have been finalized. I met with Ekman and Goudreau on Friday last week. I'm sorry, I'm trying to give a notion to someone behind you. Oh. Chief, I apologize for that. I thought you were signaling me there. Mr. No, I was uh, signaling someone else, but I apologize. Uh, so we met on Friday and we reviewed all of the documents that had come in from all of the associated engineering firms. Everything looks pretty good. There were a few, few changes. A few uh, maybe unexpected surprises, but nothing that I don't think I can't live with. We're going to let it go forward as it is to bid. Um, we have already bid some of the early trades, site work, pilings, um, concrete, because that's the stuff that we need to get started on first. And if we're going to stay on schedule, that stuff needed to get out to bid quickly so that materials could be ordered and purchased and uh, mobilized. So we're, we should have the, uh, the bids back on those early trades the end of this week, and we'll be reviewing those. Um, once we get all the final bids, and it's broken down into two sections with some of the more detailed stuff like finish being due later, uh, later this month, we should be able to determine what our guaranteed maximum price for the whole project is. That's something the uh, construction manager will put together for us, and <coughs> we'll sign uh, an agreement on that guaranteed maximum price. Um, they anticipate mobilizing about mid to the third week of November, a little bit later than I had hoped. I had hoped that we would actually have the contractors mobilizing by the first week in November, but just a little slow getting some of the, uh, some of the uh, engineering work done. We had to spend a considerable amount of time working through some of the engineering on the foundation, the piling support system. We are the only fire station in the entire state that's built in a coastal A zone. And while most engineering firms and geotech firms look at soil conditions and piling systems in the context of what the building code says, few have ever had to look at what the additional requirements of being in this particular zone are. So we spent a little bit of extra time making sure that we had it designed exactly correctly. Uh, if you watched my brief presentation at the precinct meeting a week or so ago, I had mentioned how the design has to be strong enough so that you could excavate all the dirt around the building and the entire building will remain totally supported on the pilings intact. So if they mobilize around the third week, piles will go in the ground first, uh, concrete shortly thereafter. Um, if we're able to remain on schedule, our estimated completion time would be approximately the first week of September, 
moving into the new Brown Avenue fire station. Um, it'd probably take about four weeks to finish the demo and then maybe a couple of weeks beyond that to get the rest of the site work done for paving on the precinct lot. The Winter Cunnet Road station would start at the same time, finish only a few weeks earlier, uh, probably about mid to late August that sh should be completed and we should be able to move in and occupy the new additions and then several weeks after to complete the renovation on the section that we presently <coughs> occupy. Now that all of our positions are filled with the addition of the uh, firefighters that we recently hired, our budget is beginning to stabilize. Um, as you had maybe observed over the previous 10 months, uh, overtime costs start to climb, especially during the summer, but with the large number of vacancies. The last time I was in here, I told you, you know, expect to see some increases in those accounts because of those number of vacancies. So starting to stabilize, I think we're going to be uh, okay through the rest of this year. Uh, fire alarm operator Cassie Levitt, you probably remember her as Cassie Bridal, um, is on maternity leave. She gave birth to a boy on Friday, September 21st, Brendan Allen. So congratulations to Cassie and her husband. Uh, our department members continue to take advantage of some training opportunities. I had first made you aware of those back in April. It does bring to mind, however, some changes that have occurred since that time in how we request request reimbursement and apply for grant reimbursements. Um, this is all being funded and reimbursed through available or, or remaining grant funds that the State of New Hampshire Fire Academy has. They are reimbursing us our total expenses for overtime and backfill, including all associated benefit costs. All we have to do is submit the paperwork making the request. What I suggest, because technically I would consider this a grant to the town of Hampton, um, I'm not sure that the right way to approach this now that the rules have changed a little bit based on the way we had previously handled things. Uh, whether we need to have a public hearing to authorize, for you to authorize me to apply for these funds or we need to have the public hearing when it's time to accept these funds would be the question. If we can defer the public hearing till it's time to accept the funds, I'll have a firm number on how much money we'll be anticipating. Right now, I couldn't tell you how much because we haven't even finished the training. Uh, we did complete the update on our emergency operations plan. It's in final review. Once it's filed with the state, copies will be available for your review. We're just doing a little minor editing at this point, finalizing a few things like resource lists, but for the most part, the document is complete. We do have our annual open house scheduled for Sunday, October 28th. That's this coming Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, also on that Sunday evening, the precinct has sponsored a haunted firehouse at the Beach Fire Station, and that will be from 5.30 until 7.30 with craft games and treats the children 12 and under. This is currently fire prevention week. Um, we will provide public education <coughs> programs to the children in schools, all of our local grade schools, uh, Center School, Marston School. Uh, we don't really do Hampton Academy. We'll go to Sacred Heart. We'll go to some of the all other smaller daycares as well. So this week and next week, we're busy with all the, uh, all the kids from those schools. We now have 22 of our 28 firefighters trained as rescue swimmers in an effort to provide proper protective equipment. We've worked with Cinnamon Rainbows who have graciously offered to discount the wetsuits that we need. Uh, essentially, we're going to be able to purchase $450 protective garments at a cost of $105 each. I'm making you aware, not that we're accepting a donation, but that he is discounting the cost to us. Uh, so that if, um, if you're made aware of it in the future, you understand exactly how that, that uh, came to be. As a result of the fire aboard the USS Miami at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, we're going to be provided with an opportunity to receive an orientation to the arrangement and layout of these vessels. Please be assured that in no way do I intend or does this make the Hampton Fire Department qualified to operate or fight <coughs> fire on board these types of vessels. Um, it's not my intention to place them 
in a position where they would operate where they lack training or proper equipment. Our role in a mutual aid response is, uh, as it always has been, to support the operations within our capabilities. We did hold a history night last Wednesday uh, to honor our retirees while giving our newest members a sense of pride and historical appreciation for the department and the community they now serve. Uh, about 30 or so department members and retirees attended. We showed a lot of old photos and videos, uh, basically a historical presentation of the Hampton Fire Department from the late 1800s through current times. So it really was a pretty neat thing to see. The annual chili cook-off will be held on November 8th to benefit the Seacoast Area Toy Bank Program. If uh, you go to HamptonFirefighters.org, you can get all the information on the event. We now have a Facebook page for the fire department. Please look us up and like us. And I've also established a blog for fire station updates at HamptonFire-Rescue.blogspot.com. And uh, I intend to put together a slide that we can put on channel 22 so that people will be able to see what that uh, address is and get information. And that is the report. Questions for the chief? Uh, Mr. Bean? I have no questions, Chief. Thank you. Mr. Nichols. Yeah, um, Chris, the issue of the public hearing to apply for grants as opposed to accept grants or whatever, um, when that came up before, I was never clear how we gravitated into that change. Is, is that something that I, I don't ever remember us discussing it and making the change? Was that a statutory thing? or I think there was a legal uh, decision on the way the statute was actually written under RSA, uh, RSA 31 colon 95 and it said to apply for accept or expend <coughs> grant funds so the interpretation was that you had to have a public hearing if you wanted to apply for but we would never had actually followed that practice so I'm not really sure if you can if I don't know the dollar amount I have to come back and do another public hearing so I'll leave it I'll leave it up to however you want to proceed. If we need to have a public hearing. I'd like to suggest that we ask for another look at that by the legal department and preferably only have the hearing at all to accept it as opposed to apply for it if that's something that we can do legally. Other questions? Um, one other question unrelated to that. The um, ambulance report going to the pages aren't numbered but it's roughly about one, two, three, four, about the fifth page in that's got the response time or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go like three months more looking at this, so I kind of have to re-educate myself. But in the top right on that, does this indicate that 88%, 88.34% of the time we get there within five minutes then? Oh, looking at mileage. Uh, yes, that's correct. That is of the total number of runs, the response time, Oh no, that is the, um, hang on, let me look and see what I got here. Unit dispatched. Yes, that is correct. From the time the unit goes en route from the fire station to the time they arrive at the scene, it, its response times are five minutes or less. 88% of the time, yes. Okay, and that fractile comparing to the objective, which I think is, is more of a, I don't think it's necessarily a, an objective that's unique to something that you said or whatever, it, which was 90% of the four time minutes or less, four minutes. 90 minutes, I'm sorry, 90% of the response is in four minutes or less. Correct. So in reality, one, we're coming reasonably close with this, but this still doesn't factor in the initial response from an engine. Um, down at the beach or whatever. Right. So bottom line, it's, the whole thing. And it's a broad average. Right. So although 88% of the calls are within five minutes, I don't know what percentage <coughs> based on this query are four minutes or less, which is the standard. First of the five. Yes. But I, I think, you correct me if I'm wrong, either way it looks like we're doing pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Moore. Uh, just to, I think, the intentionally set fires, which is another one of the statistics that you mentioned, and it looks as if you've got, you've made a determination that two were intentionally set. 
How many of the fires that have we've had so far this year are still under investigation? Most of them remain under investigation unless there is some clear evidence of its cause. For example, two recent ones, um, 80 North Shore Road will continue to be under investigation because there wasn't sufficient evidence to determine the exact <coughs> cause. While we approximate the area of origin, the exact cause of ignition is unknown. So it has to remain under investigation so that further information becomes available at some point in the future. So that could be we years can add that it's open. It, yeah, it could be. It could be. But um, another contrasting example would be O'Leary's. In the case of O'Leary's, you know, I was able to quickly narrow down not only the area of origin, but the equipment involved and say, based on the evidence, physical evidence available at the scene, it was electrical malfunction of a piece of equipment. The candle in the, roof, in the freezer Kind of like a well, good example, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then a question regarding your construction schedule. Has <coughs> the I've seen the data back and forth regarding the lot line adjustments that were oh, yes. necessary. Has that now been cleaned up to not, everyone's satisfaction? Not finalized. Um, I did file an application. I'll follow up tomorrow because I haven't had a chance to see the town planner. I did file an application to the planning board to basically I had to file a subdivision plan, an application. I did file that. Uh, when I met with the precinct, I made them aware of the change. I explained the change to them. I asked permission on their behalf to file the application with the planning board. They motioned to allow me to do that. Um, I requested a construction easement so that we could begin the construction prior to having the property properly deeded over to the town. I also asked for permission to include two utility easements and they motioned in favor of all three of those. So, so you, you, as far as the lot line adjustment or the yeah, the lot line adjustments concerned, you're not. There's no, going to be no reason to. I don't see to hold up the construction. No, I um, Very completed well. so the uh, Bedford Design is completing the plan for me to bring to the planning board, and I had hoped to have it done last week to go with my application, but uh, he assures me it will done be done on Wednesday this week. And sometime, hopefully around the uh, 9th of November, we'll see. Uh, what the, what the best view of pricing is at this point in time. Thank you. Mr. Pierce. Uh, yes, that does bring in another question. I know you were, I was down in the other night precinct, precinct meeting when you were talking about this line adjustment and construction easement. Um, there were a couple of questions I had at the time and I don't want to get into right now, but the construction easements, are those temporary or permanent? Those are temporary. And that will cover from when to when? Roughly? Um, roughly November of next year. <coughs> to, to November of next year and starts yeah. now? It will start immediately as soon as it's drafted and signed. Okay, so that covers the area where there's anything questionable about the property alignment. It, we don't presently own the property. Exactly. So to begin the construction right. and be able to bond it. Right. We need to own the property, but we're going to be granted a temporary construction easement such that we can begin the construction right. until the deeds are finalized. Okay. But I've asked to have it extended to the precinct's property as well, right. because once the construction of the new fire station is completed, part of the project is demolishing the existing fire station and precinct garage, which will not be on town-owned property. So the construction easement will grant us the authorization to continue to operate such that we can remove those structures and then reconfigure <coughs> that lot. Well, the reason why I ask is because if we get the construction easements to be into effect until it's in and no over in November of next year, in case there's anything about moving the title adjustment back and forth, we, we got it pretty yeah. well covered anyway. And I actually, I think it extends beyond that. Um, if I recall correctly, I think it was going to be written if you look at the memorandum mm -hmm. that the town and the precinct have, I believe there's a, maybe a June date in 2014. Mm -hmm. I think it was written through that through that date. I mean, in case there's any problem with getting the title moved back and forth, we got the construction easement to cover our bases. That was my concern about that. Um, then back to this plan here you have with the sequence of events, 
I know that uh, you mentioned down at the precinct there was going to be a groundbreaking ceremony you were going to announce sometime for both projects. As soon as we know that they're going to mobilize, we're going to start, we'll do one for each. Yes. Great, because I think everybody would be really interested in that. The other thing I was noticing here, we have calls by city, 96.66 is taken care of by ourselves, and we have some from Northampton and Seabrook and so forth. That's on the front first page. If I look back on uh, several pages back, you have like I think seven of mutual aid. So what is, if I'm interpreting that right, we get oh looks like thirty some or forty some calls from other people helping us versus only seven going out. Is that reading that correctly? No, the the page you're looking at, which is this front page here, mm -hmm. those. Calls by city mm -hmm. are the locations to which we responded. Oh, to, okay, yes. where you responded. Okay. So we responded to Exeter a total of eight times, <coughs> Hampton 1,769 times, Hampton Falls 13, Northampton 29, Portsmouth once, Seabrook once. Fifteen are unknown. They, they, probably, they probably resulted in non-transports okay. or perhaps that was a person that walked into the fire station. Okay, then back to the page further back then about the mutual aid. For all instance, you have seven. So I guess my question is, we furnished mutual aid seven times or we received it seven times or what does that mean exactly? Uh, if you could just hold the page up so I can see which page you're referring to. Right okay, here, that's about, for, right above false alarm. That's for fire apparatus. Okay. That section would be for fire apparatus responses. And do we... That's where we go out of town now. How many times do they come into town? Yep, that's also listed there. And let me just make sure I find the correct I didn't page. catch that one. That's why mutual I was. Mutual aid received. It's on what? Mutual aid given. Yeah. It's right, should be right on that same page, the line right above. Given or received. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at a different report than you are. I can leave you this copy if you like. I printed specifically this on a separate uh, okay. sheet. I was just curious if we're doing more for our neighbors than we're receiving or about even or whatever is the general flow. Um, it, it looks to be fairly close. Good. That's what I was concerned about. Thank you, Chief. Yep. That's really all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one other question. Yeah. Um, Mike's question prompt. I had a um, question from a resident that I guess related to a situation in late August where apparently a Hampton ambulance responded to a um, request for service at in Northampton at um, in the area of the Shaw's, you know, the plaza there where Home Depot is and all that. And the question was, um, can a Northampton resident request an ambulance from Hampton? And I said, no, I don't think so. I suspect it was the mutual aid request in Northampton. And then he also asked, well, then the Northampton ambulance showed up, kind of like, well, you guys were apparently first been seen or whatever, and then the transport was was made by Hampton, and I said, I suspect because they started the whole thing, they finished it. Did anything that I... That's, that's pretty accurate. Okay. That's how it frequently will occur. Okay. You know, oftentimes uh, we'll respond mutual aid, obviously because that community does not have an ambulance available at that time. It yep. doesn't mean that it can't become available. Yep or there can't be multiple patients there. Typically what we'll do is when we're requested for mutual aid, once we arrive, and we'll do the same same thing in Hampton. If, if the mutual aid ambulance arrives to the scene and has started the care of the patient, and it's within their capabilities to transport and provide an appropriate level of treatment, we'll allow them the transport. Right. If it's beyond their capabilities, then we'll take over the patient and yep. transport them ourselves. And if we go mutual aid, it's pretty much the same thing. Yep. Most of the time, we're going to arrive with a higher level. If we go to Hampton Falls or Northampton, it's almost assured. Exeter or Seabrook, it's not necessarily because they have paramedics as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much for your report. Sure, it was you're very welcome. interesting. Thank have a nice evening. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Next on the appointment schedule is Jane Cipher, the town clerk departmental update with Wanda Robertson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. 
tall person sat in the chair before me, <laughs> dangling. Um, as you know, um, of course everyone out there in the public may not know yet, um, my senior bookkeeper, Joyce Heal, um, passed in her retirement papers, effective October 30th. Um, as Joyce is the senior bookkeeper, um, someone new coming in would not necessarily be able to um, do the bookkeeping. It's a process that comes with time. Um, so first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Joyce publicly. She's been a great asset to the town of Hampton. She's been with us for 25 years, over 25 <coughs> years, um, and I wish her very well in her retirement. Um, so what I am looking for from you is um, basically your support um, in a minor reorganization of the department. It would not reduce the number of staff. It would not increase the number of staff. Basically, what it would do is just rename one position and the duties assigned to that position. Um, pretty much because of the fact that I couldn't have someone come in, at, A, as a senior bookkeeper or as a bookkeeper, right, um, as being a new, a new employee. So, that's basically what I'm looking for if you have any, any questions. Any questions? Mr. Pierce? No. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Moore? I think the minutes haven't been have have not been sealed, so we did have an opportunity to talk about this in the in a non-public bef before this meeting, and we're with you. So you. onward and upward, Mr. Bean. Um, Joyce is fantastic. We'll all miss her, and thank you for your brief. Mr. Nichols. Oh, also, I also really will miss Joyce. Every time I go up those stairs, there's her head right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's She's a Joyce sitting in that working. seat. <laughs> So good luck to her. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank sir? you. One of, the, one of the things that we were dealing with was a potential addendum to the uh, cases contract because of the renaming of the position, uh, and Wanda has prepared um, an addendum to the Teamsters, and this was also discussed at the meeting, uh, and I think uh, a motion to approve and put forward to the, to the union, would that be... Uh, Sure. I will move that we endorse the draft as prepared by Wanda, forward it to the um, bargaining unit, which is the Teamster bargaining unit, for their review and hopeful consent, and that we authorize the town manager or do the selectmen individually sign those uh, those sidebars? I would think the town manager. I, uh, the chairman signs. Chairman. I would and authorize the chairman uh, of the board to uh, sign that understanding once it's been uh, agreed to by the Teamsters. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Have Thank a nice you, evening. <laughs> For the approval of minutes, October 8th, <coughs> first page. Second page. Third page. Second page. Second page. I'd like to read a sentence which is essentially what I said, um, clarifies what I said in relation to the trash and recycling pickup operation at the top of the page. The trash and recycling pickup operation needs a thorough evaluation by management based on a couple of assumptions and adjustments I made to the finance director's analysis that is costing $120,000 more a year than the 2010 benchmark bids. That's basically what I said. Third page. Fourth page. Fifth page. And sixth page. Is there a motion? A second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving on to old business. Before we um, move on to old business, we had a non-public meeting at the end of last week's meeting, and I didn't see any minutes on that. I don't believe we sealed those minutes. So I guess the fact that if you guys remember it the same way that we did not seal them, I can remind you what the subject of the meeting. 
<laughs> that might be a good idea in my case. It, it was it was the very quick meeting associated with approving an individual's um, ability to accept the the wage increase in health insurance. Oh, of course. Session. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we we made the vote to approve that and all that at that meeting. So there should be, you know, some minutes that reflect. Um, or, I don't know if it's legal, but in lieu of that, we could make the motion again, I guess, seeing that we did not seal them and there's no reason to keep it secret. I'm not sure what the proper... Um, I believe you there, Mike? <coughs> I don't even remember if you... I don't you know if I was there, to be honest with you. Why don't we wait till Fred's back? I was well, Fred was not there. Yeah, well, I think we need to wait till someone else, everyone gets to see whatever meetings we're Well, let's go, let's make sure that we do, that someone does prepare minutes on it. All right. That, that's really all that needs to be done. It's a, I think it's a one, probably a one, two sentence. sentence. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what was the date on it? It was October, October 15th. October 15th. Monday. I will take that on. Okay. Okay. Moving on to old business. Monitoring, monitoring the schedule for election polls. I didn't know we had to monitor the election polls for state and federal. Only town, right? No, we're no. supposed to have two people there, two selectmen there. For the state and the federal? <coughs> it was at the primary, remember? Oh, that's correct. Actually, you're right. I that's as for the Secretary of State. I think it's the yes, officer you're right. said we don't have to monitor the town right. elections, but we do if somebody, and it lists some positions like the governor, the Senate, you know, statewide offices. Right. So. It's going to be it's going to be extremely busy. Presidential's in general, general usually are the voter ID situation. We can actually, as selectmen, we can actually administer the uh, the oath to so that to the person for the affidavit that they're voting without a uh, a photo ID, and I think they might ask us to help them in that respect. So. Uh, I can. I'll start if you'd like me to. I can be there from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. That okay, Tuesday. 7 a.m. to 10. To 10. Then a break and come back at 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. I could do the. What was the gap that you had there? 10 to 1. 10 to 1. I can do 1 to. Okay. Wait a minute. Sure. Um, Dick, what did you? What did you say? The gap, uh, I think, 10 to 1. was 10 to 1. I don't think there's <coughs> no requirement to have more than one there at any given time. No, right? I think they're it's talking two. two. Secretary, check. Uh, is, secretary. is Bob actually saying that, do you know? Yes. He, yeah, the, when the attorney, I'm not sure if it, it must be the Secretary of State does the, does the monitoring. Thank you. Um, Jane, if you've got a second, do you know the rule as far as two selectmen being present um. during the elections for I had town clerk conference, <coughs> New Hampshire town clerk conference last last week, and the consensus from the secretary of state's office was two, two throughout the 13 hours that we are open. They were going to check with the attorney general's office just to confirm that, but that was the consensus. And that's what I've heard from moderator Casaza as well. So, yeah, if I, Mr. Mitch, Mr. Chairman, I was there when the checkoff fellow was there from the attorney general's office or whichever office is from, and right on the checkoff. Two. It says two. Yeah. Two. Absolutely. So I, I, while I got the floor, I will volunteer to do one to six. Okay. Well, like I've already said, I'm not going to be there. At all. I'm going to be out of town that day. Mm. So uh, it appears that we need to have um, uh, one to six. Well, I can do one to the finish In if I have to. In a half hours. Okay. So do you want to do one? I can do one to the finish. What, what did you say? One to ten, Ben. I said seven uh, a.m. to ten a.m. And th one. Th then one until close, eight p.m. And then what? Yeah, come back at come losses. back at ten or whatever yeah. to sign. Yeah. Okay, every there are yeah. three people have to come back afterwards, right, Jane? We need three signatures. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, and w Phil, what did you suggest? Uh, I'm happy to do day on, stay on, whatever you need, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, um, and what, what did, you, did you say, Mike, one to eight? I can do one to the end, yeah, whatever that is. One to eight. So there, and Dick, you said that. Yeah, um, I mean, if, if we have to have two people, then in theory we, we've got to each be spending about six hours. Seven there. and a half hours. Or I, six I said and I could hours. do ten to one. Mm -hmm. 
and I guess <laughs> I could do another three-hour segment depending on when you needed it. Okay. So, seven. Um, if you could do five p.m. Dick to eight. Okay. So ten to one. And that five means eight. I could get I could potentially you know get out of there a little bit if I wish to. Yeah. Just so and we can so balance a little bit. So you're for me ten to one and five to eight. And so that means, what do we have for Phil here? What, whatever you want. Phil's going to have to be in the morning with me then. Whatever, 7 a.m. Uh, 7 to 10. 10. Phil, 7 to 10. Oh, I tell you what. Let's. If, would you mind going all the way to 1? I don't care. If you go 7 to one, seven a.m. to 1 p.m., I think that gives us... That fills one whole slot between you and me all day long. Phil and I, he starts off and I finish it off for one whole day. Okay. Right. And so then we need to have... I think you've got to cover something. That, thank you. I'll I stay if so. you need me to stay. No, I think we're good to no. go now. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Sorry. Thank you again. Oh, that's, okay. that's what I'm here for. So are you sure that's right? I think so. You're sorry. the mathematician. Well, <laughs> I've, got, I've got Mr. Bean going from 7 in the morning until 1, and then Mr. Pierce covers 1 till 8. So you've got... One complete shift, as you're saying, is complete. Mr. Mr. Moore from 7 to 10. Mr. Uh, Nichols from 10 to 1. So you got this. That completes that. And then Mr. Moore closes out. Uh, and Dick and Mr. Nichols comes back in at 5. 5 days. Yep, yep, yep. To relieve or whatever. So right. between the two of you, you've got the whole day covered. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can we like have Christine or something? Maybe I'll put that out as a confirmation email or yep. whatever. Yep. So I can do that. You might want to. You might want to send a copy of that to uh, Mr. Casaza. Okay. And I don't think there'll be any training involved. I mean, the the affidavit that we that we read to people who don't have an ID is written out. Shouldn't be too. Shouldn't did be too complicated. If that's what he wants us to did do. Did you go to that meeting they had over to Center School? I did. So did I, and that gave me a little idea of what they're looking <coughs> for with this voter ID stuff. Okay, moving on to the 2013 Warren Articles. You want me to start? Yes. Oh, I'd <coughs> love to. You're always full of knowledge. Oh, absolutely full of something, yes. Uh, yes, uh, I have a couple of big problems in general. Let me just start with my big problem in general. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll cover two different angles. I'll mention the big problem to start, uh, secondly, I'll start off with a couple of particulars. Um, I was brought to my attention looking at the tax impact statements. That's about halfway through this pile of warn articles that have been suggested so far. And I was suggested to me by a taxpayer that we check with Concord and make sure that that hasn't been changed recently. So that's my only question on that particular check with somebody, okay? See if it's going to work, if it's legal, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what the problem was with it, but they had a problem with it. So anyway, back to this, when they were talking on the phone. The other one I have a big problem with is, <clears throat> in particular, <clears throat> is the ball field at, was it Campbell property out in the middle of the back 40? that where that is, that piece of property that's way out there someplace, costing $1.1 million. Let me say for the record, I'm dead set against it, but if some of you gentlemen are enthused about it, I think we need to ask some questions. One is, what's the $1.1 million going to do? Are we going to have another rec department <laughs> office building out there too, along with that one at Tuckfield? And What's the breakdown of the 1.1? Is that land, buildings, manure spreaders, or what are we going to do? Have a garden out there or what? There's no detail on what that is all about. And I think another question we could legitimately ask, looking at it from a taxpayer point of view, who's going to use it? We have several ball fields in town now. So I think we need to give that in some heavy reconsideration. I would suggest to you gentlemen that that's a chunk of money and in view of uh, the fact that we have other issues that are pressing, uh, I think that that's something that needs to be looked at very carefully because uh, that's, a, that's a chunk of money, and I think we could use 1.1 to, if nothing else, first thing that comes to mind is maybe apply some of that thought to extra road because that's going to cost us a big chunk of money. 
And um, let's see, what else did I have? Okay, let's go stick with that one for a minute. Okay, you want to stick with more? Yes, the uh, tax impact statement, uh, just to address that. I had gotten a copy from someone mm -hmm. of House Bill 1170, which was passed in the 2012 session, mm -hmm. uh, signed and effective uh, May the 21st, 2012. So this is the apparently the law that we are uh, trying to react to to get the tax impact statements on. Right. I doubt that there's anything newer than that particular piece of legislation. So you think that the word article as it is is going to be okay? Well, it's all going to go to the town attorney for final review, but I would think we're probably pretty close to where we should be. That was the issue that was brought to me. Thank you, Ben. What, what, which one, uh, RSA was that, you recall? Uh, the House bill is 1170. It modifies It's in the it's in the Warren article, which I believe is reading Chapter Six of Session Laws of Chapter Twelve, Six, yeah. RSA thirty two five V A. Okay. RSA thirty thirty two uh, colon five is what it's modifying. Okay. And adding a paragraph uh, V dash small B. Um, as to the ball fields, mm -hmm. um, it's probably something in the order of three cents a thousand if we bond it and um, over twenty years. The ball fields that are available to the town, Parks and Recs Department, are those at Tuck Field and Eaton. There is a soccer field and also used as flag football that's available off of Hardod Way on the way to the transfer station. And as far as I know, those are the only ones that uh, the Parks and Recs Department control. They do not control the ones at the high school. They do not control any of the ones at... Um, any of the schools. I'm not clear about whether there's a playing field behind center school that's actually on school property or on town property, but I think that we, that the parks and rec people do use those. They're very busy. I know that. Um, so this gives an opportunity for, um, the land is already owned by the town. The detail that was provided to us when Diana made that presentation. I did not bring that with me. I'm sure it's the same information that's gone to the CIP committee. But I, I, and if, I then, have then I'll that. defer. Then I'll defer to, to the to the better information. Okay. But I am in I am in favor of that one. So that's I'll pass it on okay. down the road then. Mr. Nichols? Yeah, I have a couple of comments. Let me get to the the detail that Ben just brought up. The plan, I think this is what you look for. The plan will include one soccer field, one softball field with fence, one practice field, parking and access road, walkways, concession stand storage, and a leach field. So in terms of, of the, <coughs> the playing fields, so there's a, a soccer field, a softball field, and a practice field. Um, I would also comment that um, I think we've got enough um, going on with REC and the CIP between the Campbell um, ball fields, the Tuck office space, and the um, Kids Kingdom $100,000, which I'm, I'm not clear where that stands. I think it would be worthwhile getting Diana in here next week to go over those three projects, similar to what we did with Keith on the DPW. Um, what I would be interested in, similar to what Mike said, is why, it is it, why is it a million versus a half a million or three quarters of a million or 1.2 million or whatever? Where did that estimate come from? And <coughs> another thing that I'd like to understand, and I, I, I think that it would benefit the public who's got a vote on this if we go forward with it, is, is, is basically who's using the fields today? I mean, is it 80% youth groups, 20% adult leagues, so on and so forth? Do we have a whole queue of, of the existing leagues that can't do what they'd like to do because we don't have the fields, or if we build these additional ones, are other organizations going to come in that, that can't offer their capabilities? You know, in other words, is an expansion. So I think by Diana coming in next meeting, whether it's the Campbell thing, the um, Kids Kingdom replacement, or for example, on the, on the Tuck Field stuff, one thing that wasn't clear is is that 65,000, is that purely 
design work and there's it's anticipated that there's going to be some number to follow in subsequent years or is that a combination of design where design work implementation and the whole gambit so that that would be my suggestion on you that. want to invite Di Diana and do you have any comments that uh, yeah, just real quickly, um, and, and along those lines, is uh, and, and not to step on anyone's traffic that's uh, promoting recreation in the town of Hampton, um, but just an alternative, and, and perhaps recreation is changing from um, what may oftentimes be empty uh, ball fields and, and uh, municipal parks, is the Easton Surf Magazine, the October edition, just came out with a, a fabulous uh, article on New Hampshire surfing, and a big part of that is Hampton. And I know you gentlemen live down there, and on the <laughs> North Beach, it's uh, those crazy people. They're in the water all winter long, and, and this is a great article. features um, all the local young men and not so young men, uh, the early days, the changing of the guard, the current crop, great photos. And uh, these people are out there recreating, and they're doing it in rain, snow, freezing temperatures, and they're not going to ballparks, but that beach is sure full. And uh, it, it's a great article. I would encourage, uh, encourage people to get down to their, their surf shops and pick it up. But um, perhaps it's changing where we don't spend a million dollars um, on ball ballparks and, and people are actually recreating with nature. Thank you, sir. You are still in favor of this being a Warren article, though? Yeah, I don't, and, I, and people bring these forward. And in my personal opinion, it's not for me, to again, to step on traffic for people that are putting these through. And they have their perspective. And I think the voters should, should decide. And I agree with you. And I will tell you, that is one of the most common um, questions that I get for the last nine years I've been here. When are you going to do something with that land? They would like the school. You know, many people think that schools should be using it. but. There seems to be a lot of problems there, too. On the Campbell? Uh, on oh, the no, oh, no, that's Colton, not the that's same Batch as Shelter. the... That's Batch Shelter. Oh, that one. Not, uh, not yeah, that's right. I keep confusing those two. Yeah. But we have these properties, and, you know, I think it's up to the public to decide what they want to do with them. So we'll have Diana come in and ask what would be on the Warren article. No, I you want to continue? It. Oh, sure, I'm, uh, Chairman. Thank you. No, I just... I mean, I'm not... A, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm going to vote for it, but I think that we owe it to ourselves to find out the details on that. 1.1 mm -hmm. .1 is nothing to sneeze at, which brings me to point uh, two, if you will. In general, if we have worked so hard keeping the budget almost perfectly flat, we took a little money out of the undesignated balance to make it flat, which I didn't like, but that's okay. Uh, now we have this small fortune in Warren articles that's going to drive the tax rate up beyond belief. I don't know if anybody here ha knows exactly how much this. Do you want to discuss any of them individually? No, now? I'm just talking about in general. This is going to be a huge amount of money. And what well, does anybody know? What, what I, I can. I can. How this will hit the tax rate? I can rate? tell you that after last meeting, I've been keeping the, the forecasting model up to date and sending it to Mike so that he's got it or whatever. But I can tell you is after the last week, the 2013 town portion of the tax rate is looking like $7.63, which is a 7% increase over 2012. Um, 2014, which is f as far out as I really looked at closely, um, at 8.55 did not change. We did not change anything. And the forecast for 2014 would be a 12% increase over 2013. Um, another thing that crossed my mind when I was <coughs> doing this is we have not um, plugged anything into the 2014 forecast that represents any wage increases. And the CBAs that were approved this year will expire in March of 2014. So to the extent that there's contracts um, agreed to subsequent to the ones that were just approved running out and those had um, a combination of wage increase and benefit concessions or whatever that it was a net add, that would add, um, that would be on top of the 12% increase of 14 over 13. Um, the three-year increase, if you go back to 2011, which is the last bill that people saw, is essentially six and a quarter percent compounded. So that's the bottom line that, that um, I've been watching closely. And I think as we get into a dialogue, um, I think there's going to be more discussion on these as we head down to the 11th hour in January. Um, I'd like to just maybe see if Mike could 
get his hands on a on a laptop. Um, you know, any old laptop, the slowest one in the building would work just fine for that. So if we want to plug something in, we could do it and see the impact. Because I will tell you, we were one of the things we were off on our estimate last week on what it would take in the undesign undesignated fund balance to hit flat is we overlooked the fact, I think, I don't know if you've looked at this since then, <coughs> that we also added $150,000 to the overlay in, in addition to that decision that we made on taking the budget flat. So that would add um, on to the, the estimate that we had last week. It, does that make sense to you, Mike? Or? Yep. So I, I'm just suggesting that for, for future meetings, if maybe you get Paul to set you up with... Depends if I'm here. Huh? Depends if I'm here. No, I understand. I understand. Right. If you're not here, you can't. You, you know, go. you can't do it. But I think that might be helpful because this stuff is, it, it's, you know, you think you got it clear in your head, but it, it's, if we had that. Did you want to discuss any of the Warren articles? Um, yeah. Um, okay. I wanted to touch on, on the Rhodes Capital Reserve. Um, I'm still in favor of going <coughs> forward with the $300,000, but you may recall um, last week I, I made a comment that it just looked like with what this stuff was costing, whether it was the $2.7 million for the balance of Exeter Road or, um, some of the estimates for the sewer work under Winnicunit that, that it looks like the whole thing is, is, is beyond our means and I, I did a, a, a little bit of quick analysis to try and um, substantiate that. Um, according to DPW, we plow about 120 miles of roads and we maintain about 65 miles of sewer pipes. 50% uh, of the sewer pipes are old clay pipes and that's based on an email exchange with Keith the end of last week. I assume that most of the roads plowed are town roads as opposed to the few private roads we do and that most of the pipes are under the roads. The DPW CIP estimate to do Exeter Road from Route 95 to Lafayette Road, which is about a mile and a half, as you know, is 2.7 million. That's 300,000 in engineering, 1.85 million in sewer and drain related infrastructure underground and $550,000 for paving. Given the one and a half miles, that works out to $340 a linear foot. Um, that just boggled my mind when I saw that, that number, that it was that big a number on a, on a linear foot basis. The paving portion, not including the underground infrastructure, is $70 out of that $340. Based on the 2009 Beta Group paving study, paving costs, the one that Keith's estimating at $70 on this particular project, can vary from $44 to $78 a linear foot depending on the process, mill and overlay versus reclamation, the width of the road, asphalt pricing, and so on. Um, incidentally, the beta study recommended mill and overlay for Exeter Road. Extrapolating based on the pre preceding information, the cost to address the S&D sewer and drain infrastructure townwide would be $46 million driven by the 32 miles of clay pipes, 50% of the 65 miles and $35 million for the paving portion using the midpoint of the um, cost per linear feet, $61. Total of the two pieces works out to $81 million. Spread over 15 years, which is what the discussion has been, when you go beyond 15 years it gets more expensive. That would be about $5.5 million a year without getting into, into any interest or whatever. That alone would be a 30% 30, 30 increase in the town portion of the tax rate. It's just not realistic to think that we're going to increase the tax rate by 30% solely to address roads. <coughs> um, I'd like to see the manager, the combination of the manager, the DPW director, and the finance director do a similar analysis to, to what I've just done here simply because if you get the DPW um, department involved with this, I, I think you're going to do better with the assumptions that you have that, that go into it in terms of being more accurate. Like I said, I'm still okay with the $300,000 warrant for the road capital reserve because we can see it's it's going to cost a lot down the road. But I think 2013 should should in terms of what we actually do should primarily focus on planning and evaluating more economic technologies for addressing what's going on underground. We you, you can just see we're we're, we're just we're, we're just not going to get there if we try and do the whole town the way Exeter Road. Want to comment proposed. on this, Mr. Moore? Briefly, I, uh, Mr. Nichols and I both get, uh, I'm not sure why, but we both get a, an analysis that comes in daily from the uh, wastewater treatment plant as to the number of gallons that are going through there. And I think uh, Dick made this comment a couple of months ago that 
obviously you can see a, you can see a change in use in, in use of the WWTP and when it's peak peak tourist season. But it's not crazy. It's you know it doesn't get too close to that four million gallons or whatever the exact number is is that, it, that our maximum is, unless we have coastal flooding issues, which Dick said a few months ago. I think, uh, to make a long story short, the decision I think we made regarding the the Lafayette Winnicott Road um, issue last week to remove the sewer work from that and to just fix the two issues that the camera work had uh, identified was probably a good decision. Um, I suppose I have been guilty of thinking, of, of hearing clay pipe and thinking problem. And it might not be that the problem is, 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 is there or is as worrisome as, uh, as, it, as it might other might be considered. So I think we probably have made the decision that Exeter Road is too expensive to do from soup to nuts, from underground to above ground. The road itself is horrid. And needs and needs to be it needs to be handled. So, I have no problem with the three hundred thousand going into going into capital reserve. We can wait for our I and I study money to see what result that gets from gets to us next year after a hundred thousand dollars is. I think we're still on if if the voters should approve uh, and try to and try to figure out where we should throw the sewer money and keep up a keep up as best we can a repaving. Uh, repaving scenario that keeps the town roads in, in, in as good a shape as we can afford. Um, so, do you feel we need this added analysis? The which analysis, the sir? Added analysis. Are they looking for on the tax rate? No, on the town manager and the. What was I, it? I, I think what, what I'm looking for, and I think the analysis will do that. And this is not a lot of work. Um, to do this is is confirmation that we're just not going to be able to to, to go forward doing 120 miles of roads and 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 32 miles of, of clay pipes with the the assumption that we're going to do it with the traditional approach of digging everything up and replacing them. I, I think that that's the decision that we have to reach, and I think I think if once we reach that decision, then it becomes a matter of formulating a strategy. How are we going to deal with that underground infrastructure? For example, it's been raised <coughs> a, a number of times, at McDonald in particular, that there are other technologies out there other than completely digging up the road and the whole bit. I think we have, before we go charging into something as, as big as Exeter Road, I, I think we have to evaluate those technologies and, again, come up with a strategy because my conclusion is is we, we haven't got a prayer of doing it with the traditional approach, and the last thing we want to do is is um, go out and do something like Exeter Road or whatever, and then basically run it, run out of the money in terms of the public's desire to continue along that path and not be able to do um, others. So, do you feel we have that? Do you, that the these people at this time need to do this analysis? Is what I'm asking. I think we. I don't think we necessarily have to make it something that's completed between now and the budget submission date. Okay. I think, and we, I, I think, I think, I think we have think 2013. We have some time for. I think it's as simple planning. as taking what I've already done and saying, "Am I missing something major?" It's um, hard to say without Fred being here, though. So. No, well, let's bring it up next week. Okay. And what do you do? You want to wait till next week on that then, or would you rather find out what our consensus is here? Whatever. I just want to add one possibility. In, I don't have a feeling that we really have a good idea about what's going on underneath these roads. Okay. So are you in favor of this analysis or not? Well, yes, all by itself, but I just want to add that if we are looking at Exeter Road, then I think an avenue to approach it with is possibly doing the surface and then waiting till we get the damn, excuse me, the, the drain and sewer analysis done before we decide to tear up the whole thing. That's a lot of money. The, the drain and sewer analysis that we're doing, the $100,000, is for the beach. Yeah, it's going to start it's not. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, not. doesn't include any of the town? 
and, and to Ben's point, looking at the, the, the report that he and I get from the wastewater treatment plant, that makes all the sense in the world. For example, when back in June 5th and June 6th, mm -hmm. when we had some very high um, tides, astronomical surge or whatever, the daily flow popped from like 2.7 million up to 4.2 million. According to Chris Jacobs, they believe that these extremities are tidal related as opposed to rain related. We had a fairly heavy um, rainstorm on Saturday, was it Friday? Friday or Saturday, and, and, and that simply popped from like 2 to 2.3. I don't know if you noticed that or uh, whatever. So it, it definitely would, would, all the information that I've seen in the data, but more importantly, what Chris Jacobs has seen and deduced is that it's the beach and, you know, the um, tidal related stuff. So the question is, do you want to see this analysis before the budget season? Well, why not? Okay. And Mr. Bean. Uh, yes, and if I may just add one more thing, and I support everyone's comments uh, mm -hmm. at this, this table tonight. And uh, m my concern is that it, in that search for the optimal uh, infrastructure, um, that has to be balanced with uh, our employees that work for this town. And there's only so much of a tax dollar. And there's, uh, there's no money that will come perennially from the state or the federal government. They're, they're flatlined. So I want to be very careful how ambitious we are in, in communicating with the transparency of these studies so we can, we can take that into balance, not only for taxpayers but for employees because, again, you can't, uh, you can't uh, recall infrastructure that you've spent a lot of money on and employees will, uh, will suffer for that in addition to taxpayers. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we have a consensus to have uh, <coughs> what he suggested. I'll, I'll give this to you. And I'm quite happy. This can simply, if you want me to participate, fine. I think it's just a matter of uh, are there, you'll, you can look at it from the standpoint of logical flaws or whatever, but are there assumptions in here that are just plain incorrect? For example, one of my assumptions is that the 50% of the clay pipes are all under the rope. It may not be, uh, whatever. So. Well, why don't you just give that to him and yeah. then Fred can deal with it and how he chooses it to be. Thank you. Um, any other questions about that particularly Warren article? No. Dick, did you have any more? You want to um, yeah, one other one. The uh, the trash truck warrant article, which we essentially um, put on hold or whatever last week. Um, I'm not sure that, that that's the right thing to do, and, and let me clarify that. Uh, depending on whether or not we, we, we plan to continue on indefinitely with what we're doing today, which is essentially in the summer anyway, um, four rear loaders and three sidearm loaders. Um, on one level, we, we don't want to put ourselves in a position of throwing money in a, into an old truck that doesn't make sense, or worse, in a position of, of not having a, you know, a, a vehicle and affecting the, the, the level of service. I think what it comes down to is, is there appears to be a difference of opinion as to whether or not the current approach, again, roughly a 50-50 split of rear loaders to side arms, is close to a break-even or whether it's cost $120,000 a year. And quite frankly, the, the difference of opinion just comes down to a couple of assumptions or whatever. So what I would suggest is, is, is that we try and, and come to a consensus on whether or not that's <coughs> costing us in relation to the bids 10000 a year, 120000 a year, or something in between. And again, it's just a matter of discussing a couple of the assumptions, the, the factoring in of, of the three rear loaders that are in the CIP and the use of the operating 2013 operating numbers versus the historical. And then I think if we can do that, and I think, I think Mike and I and Keith and Ben could get together and do that in a half hour or an hour this week, then I think at that point it's going to become much clearer as to whether or not the rear loader makes sense on the um, 2013 warrant. Is that okay with you, Ben? Sure. Um, for Thursday or Friday would be better for me. Is that good for you, Mike? Oh, well, I should be able to look at my schedule and get back to both. Is of that you. Fine? Make it either beginning a day or end a day, not in the fine with you. I just want to. Yeah, it's fine with me. I just have one Please. comment to make that the assumption of 50-50, I think, is not what we want. We want, we think those side arms should be picking up much more than that, in my opinion. We are picking up on streets that are wide open now with rear loaders. And that, to me, is telling me there's something not quite right with that 
formula. Well, let, let's take it to the next step, though, Mike, and I think that, that Mike and, and Ben and I can come back to the board next week and, and, and we'll see what we come up with. And, then and, we'll I, and I don't know if any of the guys who drive those trucks listen to this program. Uh, right. But i got to tell you, right. I watched them this morning. Which one? The sidearms. Okay. And those guys are smooth. I mean, they they are coming in there. They're they're getting that arm out there. The oh, time. they're they, fantastic! They moved by and they took fast. that big truck, and because it's now not high beach season, they're backing it down the roads that are behind my house. That the ones that they cover with really? a rear packer. Cole, no. Cutler, but okay. I'm not sure about Cole. Cole Cole still might be a little <laughs> bit too much of a challenge. Oh, tricky. Um, but the guy was backing down Cutler, and it's not that much. Yeah, you know, because there's no part. They're not park. People aren't parking on the street now. But anyway, I think the guys are fantastic. They're doing the best they can with those sidearms, and they're so moving it right along. We're going to discuss this afterwards. Did you have any more? Um, oh, that's it. Now, I'd like to visit another particular, if we may. Okay, Mr. Chairman. We haven't talked about this tonight. Uh, I got a taxpayer calling me, wanting to know what in the heck we're doing with this one. The sewer connection fees. If you look about, oh. Uh, a little over halfway through the pile is the sewer connection fees that used to be $100 for each additional five living units and on and on each. It says $100 each for each sewer connection from one to five and an additional 100 for additional five. That's sort of ambiguous to me. And the taxpayer also said you should make it perfectly clear that the suggestion that's been made already on this sheet is the sewer connection fee should be $300 for each sewer connection, period period without one to five. For every connection they have, it's an additional $300. That's the suggestion this taxpayer makes. And I agree with that. Okay. How do other people feel about that? Ben? I haven't, ex I haven't uh, developed an opinion. Yeah. It sure sounds like it's, oh, I see, you say My for own. each sewer connection from one to five units. Yeah. I see. So you're it's saying it should be 50, if it's five living units, it should be 1500 bucks. Yeah. So we just make well, it 300 in the old each? days, they would have five units, and there would only be one water bill. Yeah. So it depends on why don't we have uh, the legal department look at that with a suggestion that just make it 300. There's probably each. some I'm out sure there. The people that who are developing would be uh, would be coming in and doing the other uh, the other side. There of the probably program. are still places that are individually are five are one unit and five. There's one bill and five. So we might want to have it. Worded so we can get fifteen hundred out of those. Then is what no, I don't think so. If I they only this, have one I water this meter, happens when they attach to the sewer. It this is a one shot deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's like yeah. Okay, yeah. so and there may be there may be some that are uh, different than that. So I mean, this not, this would be in the future if they redid something different. No, I'm just saying that it it seems like it's saying that it's three hundred dollars for each for one to five living units, but then is that a sewer connection to each one of the ones or all five? Depends. They used to yeah. do it differently. Yeah. So, so I think we are looking at and possibly make it $300 for each living unit if we can do that. Okay. That's well, my suggestion. I don't know about that. It, I think we need to, to, to tell us what it looks like. I mean, if it's one water meter and, you know, uh, if it's a different properties, they're not supposed to. They're all supposed to have their own um, water service. How about sewage? They're not. You know, I don't know what it's like down the beach. I can't tell you what the answers are. But there are some that are different that oh, yeah, have been in the past. So uh, I'm sure they have a way of figuring it out. Sure. This is for new people right. that are going into it, right. and in the future, they're not going to. I know it's against the law to go from one house to another house and then go into it, and there are many places that are that way today. Oh, probably. Yeah. I, I believe, sir, that, that what we're talking about is that when a new building is going in, mm -hmm. if say it's a five-unit condominium, mm -hmm. they're going to be charged fifteen hundred dollars for them to hook up to the sewer in the correct the correct way. Mm -hmm. If there's ten units, the way I'm reading this right now is would be fifteen hundred dollars plus an additional three hundred dollars or eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. I believe what Michael is suggesting is that every unit is charged three hundred dollars, no, no matter how many there are. That's in the my building. suggestion yeah. for something new. Correct. That's Correct. going to be attached right. to the. Bank. Well, we're not going to go back and redo no. anything at the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Or anywhere. 
I don't think I had any. Once okay, you pass around for a little bit, Rick. Any Please. thing for discussion? We are now waiting for most of, for <coughs> many of the ones that we've discussed to come back from the legal review. Is that mm -hmm. is that accurate? We're still on track to try to finalize the moneyed articles by the 5th of November. Mm -hmm. There are thereabouts, perhaps the 12th. Um, <coughs> I think the only two that I'm aware of that we haven't come to a firm conclusion on is the Fire Department Capital Reserve, I should say more than that, the ball fields and the rec space. We're getting closer. So Further no more comments. I, I don't know if... I, I think we also were waiting for some information on Keith on the um, the wash bay um, on a issue of how much size matter. And there are several that that have been included in our package over the course of the last several weeks mm -hmm. that have no money impact. And I don't know if we're going to be talking about those in the latter part of November and into December. Is that our is that our plan? The pedicab and. And taxi uh, and yeah, we need Fred here, number one, for that. Yeah, you know, I'm not I, suggesting I we do it tonight. We're, I'm just trying to figure out what we're way plan. ahead of, of where we've been in the past mm -hmm. okay, in terms of the time frame that we're addressing these. And I think what my view of when we said we want everything set by November 1st is barring something unforeseen or whatever, that we weren't going to add articles. It didn't mean language didn't get changed, or it didn't mean that we might not make mm -hmm. some decisions that are financially related. It's just we weren't throwing new articles mm -hmm. at us, you know. Any comments, Mr. Bean? No, sir. Okay. Any old business? I'd, I'd like to make one final comment on the Warren articles. Mm -hmm. It's a reiteration, but it's come up a lot. We really... Um, we didn't see any updates of the Warren articles this past week, which is fine. I have no complaint with that. But going forward, any articles that are sent to us, preferably the whole package, put some combination of a date and a revision number on there. Otherwise, great. Super. Uh, if I could just one quick comment, sir. Um, Legal has received these, and all the Warren articles at the suggestion has now received a revision date so that we'll yep. be able to tell from the just right. looking at it where we are. Right. So that has been taken care of. And one of the reasons, Mr. Chairman, why I was pushing this articles, one articles, to get through is so we can give them to the budget committee before they get squeezed. I understand that. Any comments? No, sir. Any old business, I mean? No, sir. No? Any old business? Any old business? Quick question for oh, yeah. for I the guess. finance director and the ATM. We're going to be able to set a tax rate next week? I have not looked at the newest queue. The last I knew, we were still missing one uh, form from the SAU 90, and it was being worked on. Um, the last communication I had, which was last Wednesday or Thursday. Um, when I the, the DRA now is setting up this thing called a queue. It's a it's a spreadsheet. When I looked at it last week, which it was updated on Friday, no town was ready to have their tax rate set. Mm -hmm. And so I will go back and look again uh, within the next day or so to see if we've moved along, if we have anything that's cleared up and, and taken care of. So the answer is I don't know. Thank you. i got one more. Uh, it's really not old business. It's sort of this year, but it happens every year. Who's going to go to this little gem? It's the annual conference preview guide for the LGC. I got good. suckered into doing it last year. Does somebody else want to try it? Yeah. I think Fred's traditionally been the one that's gone. Yeah, well, I went last year. And he usually goes. Got, uh, there should yeah, be a select We'll guy. check with Fred when he comes. Who wants, isn't is there a select who'd like to go? It's very entertaining. It really is. Do you want to go again? Do you enjoyed it so much? No, I'm just selling it hey, to we'll those two gentlemen over there. <laughs> okay, I think they know if they want to go. Okay. Moving on to Fred, new business. Fred, uh, one other yeah. item. Uh, I'm going to call it old business or whatever. Right. Um, the IT committee. Um, I was appointed as Sletman's rep. One thing that we didn't do was appoint an alternate, and um, some of the time, because they both meet on Thursdays and I'm the energy committee rep, um, I end up with a conflict. So I would like to request that we appoint an alternate to the uh, Sletman's rep to the IT committee. I'm happy to jump on that bandwagon. Okay. Thank you. Every, do we don't have a motion? Need a motion for that, or do we? I think we probably do. Okay. Someone? Mr. Nichols moving. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Moving on to new business. The purchasing power and procedures did waiver building department vehicle purchase. Yes. Um, I've been working with Kevin Schultz in the building department, and I believe I've sent you at least one of the um, 
good packages that we received, which was from Quirk for uh, a new um, Chevy Colorado four-wheel drive extended cab LT. Um, <coughs> that bid came in, including uh, the trade-in, at exactly $20,000. Um, the truck was last known to be located in on the Cape. There was no hole put on it, so at this time, um, we hope that it's still there. We additionally received a second bid uh, from Hilltop Chevrolet, and with the defined uh, rate in at $3,500, it came in at $20,492. It's once again a located vehicle that's out in New York State. Uh, what I'm asking for is the board's approval to waive the bidding requirements on this where we do have two legitimate um, quotes uh, that we take the best bid we can get as long as the vehicle still exists. I know the Hilltop does exist. We're not sure about court. So I'm asking for a maximum amount of $20,492 for purchase of a truck for the public, for the building department. Questions? Mr. <coughs> Bean? No, sir. Mr. Nichols? Mr. Pierce? What was the two prices again, Mike? 20000 and 20492 I'm asking for the authorization up to the 20492 so that in case this first one is not available. The 492 is that the, which one is that? It, they're both identical, literally. Oh, that is from Hilltop. Yeah, yeah if you're going to find out which ones are available, go at the lowest one. Good show. Thank you. Mr. No questions. Has it been around? I can make a motion. Yes. I would move that we waive the um, bidding requirements under the purchasing policy for the building department's uh, purchase and authorize up to $20,492 for the vehicle. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Other, role, other new business? Mr. Bean? No, sir. Mr. Nichols? Mr. Pierce? Mr. No, sir. The consent agenda tonight includes Nathaniel Court Road warranty deed, Nathaniel Court utility letter of agreement, Unitel and Northern New England telephone operations doing business at Fairpoint. One day entertainment permit for Ron Gillian's Notice of welfare lien. Does anyone want to make a motion? I would move the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Unanimous. Should we have some discussion on that first? It's already been done. What? We just voted on it. You didn't ask for any discussion, Mr. Chairman. But did you? You didn't voice any. I did. As soon as you guys started to hold up your hands, I said, "Is there any discussion?" May, may I rise to a point of order? I yeah. think the way consent agendas work, and I'm not trying to stop you in this conversation. Ask them to be removed. The consent, the consent agenda is the consent agenda. If you, if you want something, if you have to ask a question about it or wish to, then you should say, let's, let us remove that item from the consent agenda. Okay. I mean, seriously, Great. consent agendas are usually not something that there's any conversation about at all. And if you wish it, which is fine, um, then you should say, I want to remove item two, and then we can go well, on with the rest get, of it. Before you get to that's it. That's how it's always yeah. been done here. Fine. I'm not trying to <coughs> Sounds intervene, good to me. but I think that's the way we I, should I know how that works. I can live with that. <coughs> Thank you. Well, it is how it's always been done. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Selectman's closing comment. I have uh, one. Please. Um, brought it up last week or the week before, the microfilming <coughs> of the assessing records, oh, which I believe is the there. way around the statute There's or whatever. Um, what I'd suggest it is, is wait until Fred's back, so I just ask that you put on the agenda um, for next week's meeting. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank well, you. We've got one, only one piece of paper to sign here? Uh, no. Oh, well, whoever's going to go to this, if I could go, it's 14th and 15th of November.